Welcome to the Maraudan in-depth dungeon guide for both Horde and Alliance. In this video I'll be documenting every quest, rare, boss strategy, and the respective loots, and how to enter each wing of the dungeon. The timestamps for each category will be available in the comments section found below, as well as a full dungeon run in the description. Maraudan is a system of caves found in the west corner of Desolus, and is the birthplace of the centaur. There are two separate wings that Maraudan can be completed in. But if you opt to clear the whole dungeon, expect a nearly 2 hour run. There are quite a few powerful items found within, so don't let the length deter you as this dungeon provides you with items you can carry until you upgrade them once you're level 60. Furthermore, nearly every quest can be found in Deathless, and none have prerequisites, so Maradon is an excellent place to grind out a level in a fairly short duration. The recommended levels for this dungeon are 47 to 52, but you can enter as early as level 35. As for the recommended composition, make sure your group is ranged heavy, as many of the mobs and some of the bosses do massive amounts of area of effect damage, making the dungeon exponentially more difficult if you're with a group primarily composed of melee. Any combination of ranged, a tank, and a healer will make do. Do not be dissuaded if you're a melee damage dealer, just be prepared for the difficulties that lie ahead. Our first of three alliance quests is Corruption of Earth and Seed from Keeper Mirandus in Nigel's Point. This quest simply requires us to kill Theradris, who is the last boss of Maraudan, and rewards one of three powerful weapons. Our next quest, Vile Tongue Corruption from Talandria, who is also found in Nigel's Point, sends us inside the entrance area to fill a file from any of the water pools found near the orange entrance. Once we've filled the file, we can head inside and look for the corrupted flowers found anywhere within. Upon using the new file, you will purify the flower, but spawn two to three corrupted elementals, which will reward completion credit. Our final alliance quest can be found in the Mage Tower of Theramore. From Archmage Turvash, we can pick up Shadow Shard Fragments. This quest requires us to collect 10 Shadow Shard Fragments from any of the elementals found within the dungeon. Our first of three Horde quests is Corruption of Earth and Seed from Salandra near Shadowprey Village. This quest simply requires us to kill Theradris, who is the last boss of Maradon and rewards one of three powerful weapons. Our next quest, Vile Tongue Corruption from Vark Battlescar, who is found in Shadowprey Village, sends us inside the entrance area to fill a file from any of the water pools found near the orange entrance. Once we've filled the file, we can head inside and look for corrupted flowers found anywhere within. Upon using the new file, you will purify the flower, but spawn two to three corrupted elementals, which will reward completion credit. Our final horde quest can be found in the Valley of Spirits of Orgrimmar. From Uthulne, we can pick up Shadow Shard Fragments. This quest requires us to collect 10 Shadow Shard Fragments from any of the elementals found within the dungeon entrance. Our first neutral quest begins in the north central part of Desolus. At Cormac's Hut, we can pick up Twisted Evils from Willow. For this quest, we are required to collect 15 Theragic Crystal Carvings found off of virtually every mob within the dungeon. Our lengthiest quest comes from the Centaur Pariah patrolling the southern part of Desolus. From him, we collect the Pariah's instructions. To complete this quest, we'll first need to kill the Nameless Prophet found at the entrance of Maraudan. From him, we'll receive the Amulet of Spirits, which we'll need to collect the remainder of the items. Utilize the Amulet on the first con, found here, to collect the first gem. Repeat for the second con, found here, the third con, found here, the fourth con, found here, and finally, the fifth con, found here. Once all gems are collected, use them to craft the Amulet of Union. Our second to last quest starts in the entrance area of Maradon. From Kavindra, we can pick up Legends of Maradon. This quest rewards more than 10,000 experience, as well as granting you the ability to teleport halfway into the dungeon. Kavindra requires you to collect the Celebrian Diamond from Lord Vileltongue, and the Celebrian Rod from Noxian. Upon killing our fourth boss, Celebris, he will be reborn enabling you to turn in the quest, and then giving you the follow-up, the Scepter of Celebris, which just requires you to watch Celebris craft you the Scepter. Our final quest, Seed of Life, can be picked up from Zaytar Spirit once you've completed the dungeon. This quest is quite simple and just requires us to head to Moonglade and turn the seed into Keeper Romulus. If you enter the dungeon through the orange side, the first boss we'll encounter is Noxian. Noxian is a fairly easy boss that deals nature damage with each hit. His first ability is Toxic Volley, launching a toxin at each member in your party and poisoning each player hit for minimal damage. 
His second ability is Uppercut, which does minimal damage and knocks you up. Face your back towards a wall as to avoid being knocked into enemies. At 50% health, Noxian will use his final ability, in which he becomes 5 smaller elementals. Do your best to focus them down, but their damage is negligible. Upon killing the final one, Noxian will return, allowing you to finish him off. Our second boss in the orange wing is Razor Lash. Razor Lash is a fairly simple tank and spank. He has a passive wind fury that will occasionally hit his target for 3 total hits. If you keep your tank healed up, this won't be something you'll really need to worry about. Face Razor Lash away from the party as he'll also cleave. Lastly, Razor Lash will apply a puncture, which does minor physical damage over 10 seconds. Overall, an incredibly easy boss, and probably the easiest of the dungeon. If you enter through the purple wing, the first boss you'll encounter is Lord Vileton. He's flanked by two stealth satyrs, so focus them down first upon pulling. Occasionally Vileton will smoke bomb, stunning everything in an area around him. This can only be avoided by keeping your distance, so if you're ranged, you're safe. Vileton's next ability is a sort of combo. He will blink away from the tank and immediately multi-shot the party for minor damage in a cone in front of him. If you don't approach him, he'll continue to shoot. He'll occasionally repeat this combo, but otherwise that's it. While we're leaving the purple wing, make sure you check for our dungeon's only rare, Meshlock the Harvester, found patrolling the upper corrupted pools. Meshlock is an incredibly easy tank in Spank. If you don't kill him quickly enough, he might war stomp, stunning in an area around him. But that's about all he does. At the end of the corrupted waterfalls, we encounter Celebris the Cursed. Celebris is surrounded by some treants. These can be area of affected down, and even if they move on to attack your allies, they don't do enough damage to be of real concern. Celebris himself primarily casts the nature spell Wrath, and will occasionally cast Entangling Roots, which will snare you for a few seconds. Lastly, Celebris will use Force of Nature, respawning his treants. Do your best to pick up the treants, but again, they aren't too big of a concern. Celebris is incredibly easy and marks the end of the easier section of the dungeon. Past this point, your group should be on higher alert as things become much more difficult. As we proceed further into the cavern, we encounter a lone goblin engineer. Tinker Gizlock should not pose any issues to your group as long as your tank keeps him faced away and the healer is ready to spot heal. Gizlock's primary ability is his goblin dragon gun, which will do a cone of fire damage in front of him for 8 seconds. Face this away from your group, otherwise it will melt everyone quickly due to its high damage output. Gizlock will also occasionally throw a bomb, doing minimal fire damage in an area. Gizlock also uses Flash Bomb, which only fears beasts. Thus, if you're Druid, be prepared. Make sure you clear the patrols around Gizlock to avoid any incidents with hunter pets, druids being feared, or just simple missteps. Down in the waters at the bottom of the cavern, we encounter a massive crocodile named Rot Grip. Don't let his fierce name scare you, as he's just a simple tank and spank. Rot Grip has one ability, Fatal Bite, which just heals him for a portion of the damage dealt when used. Make sure you don't pull the hydras around him, as they can be a pain. And if you fight him below water, watch your breath meter, but otherwise, a fairly simple fight. Back up the cave, at the highest point, we find an ancient mountain giant known as Landslide. Landslide has a massive health pool, but his damage isn't all too high. Occasionally he will trample the party dealing group-wide nature damage, but the damage is quite low. At about 50%, he will stun the entire party for 8 seconds and summon 4 shardlings. This is where the fight can become challenging. Keep the shardlings off of your healer and make sure they're burst down. They stun quite often, thus having the potential to easily wipe your group, especially if they gang up on your healer. While this is going on, Landslide will begin knocking the tank away. This is unavoidable and just deals some extra damage, but doesn't reset threat. Once dead, we can progress to our final boss, and the mother of the centaurs, Princess Theridris. Theridris has an incredibly large health pool, and can be incredibly difficult for melee heavy groups. Starting off with her simplest ability, she will occasionally hurl a boulder at a random party member, which will apply a short stun and do minimal nature damage. This is unavoidable, so plan accordingly if she turns towards you. Theragis' main ability is Dust Field. For a few seconds, she'll cast the Nature Damage Hellfire around herself. Move away from her to avoid the damage. 
The dust field will also begin knocking you back, so the best positioning during the fight would be against a wall or in an open, safe area. Watch your health and use cooldowns or potions here as the damage adds up and will eventually run your healer out of mana considering how much health she has. Theragis' final ability is Repulsive Gaze. Repulsive Gaze is a party-wide intimidating shout. The main target will tremble in place while the rest of the group flees. My best advice here is to keep everyone topped off. This is hard to predict and a lot can go wrong if she chains abilities together with her fear. Stay determined and eventually you'll whittle down her health and be rewarded with not one, but two fantastic items. While I showcase how to enter the dungeon through both sides, I'd just like to thank everyone for their support. I'm trying a new format here and trying to clean up my videos, so your suggestions and feedback are always appreciated. As always, thank you very much for subscribing and viewing, and have a fantastic day. I'm going to let the music play on here while I route you through the dungeon, as the place is quite a maze.